One of the, the misconceptions about uh, agricultural biotechnology, genetic engineering for crop improvement, is that all of this technology was developed by big multinational companies that just want to make money and they want to sell their seeds and, um, and harass poor farmers and, and consumers. But the technology was actually developed with a lot of public scientists. Um, at one time, the USDA and land-grant universities in the U.S. were the biggest developers of genetically engineered crops, at least at a research stage. Uh, one of the examples coming from the public sector is the European example of uh, what's called golden rice. Now, in some parts of the world, poorer countries, uh, rice is the staple food. The, uh, the people get enough to eat, but rice, in spite of having a good amount of calories and some nutrients, is devoid, virtually devoid of vitamin A. And the manifestation, if your diet is largely rice, uh, you tend to go blind and in severe cases you can die from vitamin A deficiency. So these uh, scientists in Germany and Switzerland, public scientists, decided that it would be a really good use of the technology if we could engineer rice to produce its own vitamin A precursor. So a precursor is the chemical that our body converts into vitamin A. Uh, it's the stuff that you eat carrots. Remember in the old days you say carrots are good for the eyesight? Well, carrots have a lot of uh, beta carotene, uh, named after carrots. That's where it comes from. It helps with eyesight. Helps people from going blind. People in poorer parts of the world who have a diet largely of rice don't have access to carrots or other leafy greens that are rich in vitamin A, and certainly not the meat sources that are rich in vitamin A. So the idea was, if we can make rice produce beta carotene and give it to these people, give it to the local farmers, they would eat rice as part of their normal diet, and they would get enough beta carotene to overcome the vitamin A deficiency. What a, what a noble objective. Well, this work has been going on now since the 1990s, and a number of fits and starts, some setbacks, some technical setbacks, some regulatory setbacks, nothing to do with safety, but traditional plant breeding problems, agronomic production, and so on. Eventually, uh, we hope now to have golden rice on the market uh, in Bangladesh and in the Philippines any day now. And to the uh, academic, scientific community, agricultural community, we've been hearing this for several years. Any day now we'll get the final approvals. And the uh, activist community that don't like genetic technologies at all are campaigning very hard against this throughout Asia and Africa, places where it can do the most good. Uh, making up stories, essentially um, saying that, oh, if people eat this golden rice, you know, they'll get cancer, uh, or the men will become sterile. And it's, it's completely bogus. There's no evidence whatsoever. But some people respond to those kinds of emotional appeals. And as a result, golden rice has been put off, uh, rejected at the last minute by any number of governments. Um, because they, for whatever reason, they believe these stories. And it's, uh, it's, it's very discouraging, frustrating for those of us who say, yeah, this is actually a really good uh, humanitarian kind of project. Uh, but the activists know the golden rice is the thin edge of the wedge. Once people are exposed to it and they see that there's no safety issue and that it actually does some good without any big companies being involved, well, maybe they'll look more closely at other GMOs in the diet and uh, be more accepting of those too.